All right, I want to do a quick video here on some movies, some Christian movies that I would recommend and some that I wouldn't recommend. I was going to do this uh, video a little while ago, and I just could not find a couple of our favorite DVDs. I, I didn't know where they were at. Here they turned out that they were in a box of uh, other DVDs I was going to get rid of from, from the move, you know, moving up here. I just had them all piled together. So fortunately, I didn't get rid of them. But uh, just going to show you a couple of these here. First, we have Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, this is an older film. Not sure when it was made, if it says anything on the back here. But um, the Hollywood uh, movie actor Liam Neeson uh, was in this thing. And uh, this was his first big screen production. And uh, it's this thing here, I don't recommend Okay, don't don't waste your money on this one. This Pilgrim's Progress thing, it was very very weird, uh, very strangely put together. Not even close to the book by John Bunyan. Okay, it was very odd. Uh, as he as the guy's walking through, the character's walking through. You know, Christian from the character or from the book. As he's walking around, they're like there. There's these weird voices that keep repeating scripture and over and over and over again. And it's like the word of God, of God, of God, of God, of God you know, like that. It's, it's, it's kind of creepy, kind of really weird. And the acting is pretty bad. So don't waste money on this one. This one here is no good. Don't recommend that one. Next we have the radicals. And I'm not going to show any of these, you know, any clips from any of these or anything, because I don't want to get in more copyright trouble. So next we have the radicals and, uh, you know, to a world of fear, Anabaptists, introduced freedom, a crime punished by death. And it was basically the story of, uh, he was a, a monk, she was a nun, I think is how it was, or maybe he was a priest. I think he was a monk. But anyways, he they fall in love and they run off and they become Anabaptists and they show that they're getting baptized by sprinkling them with water, which is not the right method. But uh, then they go on and they're just kind of like, you know, Basically, be, they become pacifists, and it's like this, the whole thing is promoting radical pacifism, which I am very much opposed to. Uh, I don't think that Christians should take up arms and form armies or anything like that, as far as going out and making a Christian nation. But if Catholics are coming through an area, or Muslims are, you know, Muslims are Catholics, or anything like that, and they're killing and raping and murdering, plundering, whatever, okay, stand up and fight, all right? Um, if the, if the government is not protecting you like they're supposed to do, according to Romans chapter 13, they're supposed to have the sword that a revenger of, against all those that, that are, are committing evil, essentially. You know, you read Romans chapter 13, the first couple verses. If the government's not doing that, uh, you have no, there's no reason for you to just lay down and die, okay? All you're doing is emboldening those wicked uh, soldiers to be worse with the next family that they come into. So I'm all for fighting in a defensive manner, and this movie is very much against that. So again, I don't recommend this one. Um, and it, it gets real gruesome at the end. And you know, I realize that the the martyrdom and stuff was very gruesome. You know, that the Catholics did to Christians, but you know, it's it's like, you know, does the Lord really want us to see that reenacted? Or I don't know. Again, I you know, the end of the movie is very gruesome, uh, showing the the guy being tortured to death and uh, basically taking hot irons and stuff and putting them on his tongue and ripping pieces off and things, and then they burn him to death, and they're putting hot irons into on his face and everything. It's very, very gruesome. You know, I would not want, you know, if I had children that were old enough to watch that, I wouldn't want them watching it. So another one, I eh, don't really recommend this, that one. Next we have John Wesley. Uh, John Wesley here. This this was a okay movie. Um, you know there was there were some good parts to it. Uh, it seemed to be fairly decent. Um, you know, 77 minutes in collar. There you have the back of that one. Uh, there's some questions about John Wesley. Uh, certainly, he was not a perfect man, but um, not a real bad one. This next one here seemed to be a pretty good movie. The story of William Carey, Candle in the Dark. And, uh, you know, tells a story about William Carey and everything. And, and uh, 
again, it was it was a pretty good movie. Um, there are some good challenges in it and things for Christians to see how a man can suffer and yet not give up on the Lord. His wife gave up on the Lord, and that was the true story about William Carey's wife. And you know, it's it's from what I understand about William Carey, this movie's pretty close to uh, the truth of his life. You know, again, there's probably some details that have been changed. Most movie people do that, but uh, my issue with this movie is the actors. You know, you watch the after the movie thing, you know, where they interview the actors, and it's like these people, you know, like the one guy swears. I'm going, you played William Carey, you know, <laughs> you're using profanity. And uh, But it gets worse than that, you know, with some of these Christian movies, like this one. God's Outlaw, the story of William Tyndale. Uh, this guy here, uh, do they have his name on it? Um... I don't know if they have his name on it. Can't think of what the guy's name is in real life. You know, somebody will put it down in the comments. But the guy, uh, he was on, I remember he used to be on the, the, the old TV show about a bar in Boston called Cheers. And he was like kind of a rich guy or whatever else. But he's a sodomite in real life. So you get a Christian hero of the faith like William Tyndale played by a sodomite. It's like, yeah, okay. I mean, as far as the accuracy of the story is concerned... Again, it's pretty accurate to the real life account of William Tyndale. And there are some challenging, you know, some good parts of the movie, but it's like, it's tainted by the fact that guy's a sodomite. You know, how you get a Christian hero of the faith played by a sodomite? So that's kind of an issue. Uh, this one here, we just actually watched uh, the other night. My wife and I, we were watching this. Uh, it's about John Wycliffe, the morning star. Again, pretty good movie and you know all of these movies you know i'm not comparing them to hollywood movies you know uh hollywood movies they they put more money into the acting and more money into the scenes and the props and the costumes and everything else so you know if you're not familiar with christian produced movies you might watch me go oh, this is really kind of cheesy or whatever else you know i mean just appreciate it for the story that it's telling you know don't compare it to hollywood but um pretty good movie the interesting thing about this movie is that it's got, uh, I don't remember how many, I'm trying to see here if it has, yeah, uh, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and German with optional English subtitles. And, you know, I mean, it actually plays the movie in those different languages. So, you know, four different languages. You can watch the whole thing, you know, in four different languages. Uh, so it's pretty interesting that they'd get that all on one DVD like that. Uh, but again, it's a pretty good movie. Uh, John Wycliffe, you know, uh, for his time, he definitely did some things that, that were good. Uh, was the first one, if you don't know the story about John Wycliffe, he was the first one to bring out an English translation of the scriptures. So that one's not too bad. But um, next we have Red Runs the River. This is put out by Bob Jones University. And uh, this one I haven't seen in quite a few years, but... Uh, the storyline, from what I remember, it was kind of, uh, kind of confusing. It wasn't really, it didn't really flow all that well, and uh, it's it's basically the story of a, a general, I guess in the in the Civil War that that uh, is a lost man and he ends up, excuse me, ends up getting saved. Um, so, uh, this one, this one, I'd say, yeah, you know, I mean, there's a there's a battle scene and stuff, which is again a historical reenactment of the Civil War, so, uh, but it's not real gruesome or really really bad over the edge or anything like that. So that one, you know, if you if you're into the Civil War thing, it, that wouldn't be too bad of one to watch. Uh, maybe it won't be the storyline won't be real confusing to you. Maybe you might say, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, this one, next one, we have a the story of John Huss. Uh, this one the was a pretty low dollar um, production, but I really enjoyed this movie. This is a really good one. Uh, this would be one that I would definitely recommend. And you know when they show John Huss being burned at the end, it's not gruesome or anything. They don't show uh, overly gruesome details of you know his flesh melting off or something like that. I mean, it still shows that he's getting burned at the stake. It's still you still experience the horror of watching. You know, Catholic officials basically uh, just not even caring what he had to say in his trial, and just calling him, condemning him as a heretic, and we're going to burn him. And you know, he goes from being a great priest to 
getting burned at the stake. So yeah, this one, I'd recommend the John Huss movie. Definitely. That's a good one. Here's another one, which I think is a pretty good one. Uh, this is more of a modern one, but it still conveys a pretty decent amount of truth. Time Changer. Uh, it's about uh, this professor right here. Uh, he's basically trying to say that, that uh, it doesn't really matter if that we have our morals come from the Bible. We can just say you know, that things are right or wrong based on our own feelings. And, and an older professor at the Bible College where he's at, this, back in the 1800s, basically says you need to see the future and see what your departure from Scripture is going to cause. And he basically sends this guy from the 1800s into today, like the 21st century, and he's walking around just horrified at what he's seeing. And it's, you know, it's kind of funny. It's, you know, there's some humorous parts of the movie, but, you know, very challenging as well. And, um, you know, so this one, I think, another one I would say that, yeah, I'd recommend this one. Uh, another good movie and uh, a good, some good challenges in it. This is another one I think is a great movie, The Printing. It's about over in Russia, how that they, the underground churches were printing Bibles and the persecution that, that came as a result of it. And uh, just a really, really good movie. This, this is definitely my second favorite movie, second favorite Christian movie, uh, just a very, very neat movie, um, highly recommended. I'm not going to tell you much about the storyline because I don't want to mess it up, but I'm sure a lot of these you can get on eBay or look around on the internet, just type in the printing uh, from Unusual Films and uh, recommend it. But my favorite, number one movie, my favorite one that I would recommend to anybody out there, you can watch it with your children of any age. Um, definitely not any kind of scary parts or bloody parts or anything else in it. Uh, just a real, real challenge. I uh, just love this movie. I've seen it, I don't know how many times, <laughs> but uh, just it's a great film. Uh, the film Sheffy, uh, definitely one of my favorites. It's about a young circuit riding Methodist preacher, Robert Sayers Sheffy, and how he goes through the mountains and he basically preaches to people, you know. And um, really, really some challenging things in it, uh, just very convicting. Um, part of the reason why I'm in ministry today is because of this film. Uh, just the, the challenges that it, that it gives uh, about how God can provide for you if you're doing the work of the Lord and how uh, self-sacrifice comes into, you know, and, and charity into the whole thing of, of serving and of preaching the gospel. So um, my most recommended film right here, Sheffy by Unusual Films. So if you would like to get some good Christian movies to, to watch with your family, these are ones I'd recommend right here. John Huss, Time Changer, The Printing, and Sheffy. These ones over here, uh, mm, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend them as much. Um, another thing I want to warn you against is buying any kind of a movie that has that's about biblical times or biblical characters. Um, there's a reason that God gave us His Word as a written form. Uh, we're not supposed to have visual things in terms of our rela relationship to the Lord. God didn't give us a picture book. He gave us a word book. And so when you see a movie, it's putting pictures in your mind and it's very easy to get a false impression. And any, any Bible time movie I've ever seen is so filled with errors and lies and deception, uh, it takes you away from the Word of God. And they're adding to and taking from the Word of God, which is strictly forbidden. So I would stay away from any kind of a biblical times movie, uh, the life of Moses or Paul or Peter or anything with Jesus. Just stay away from it. I stay away from that stuff. Um, movies about heroes of the faith back in the Reformation times or up into through the 1800s and things. Yeah, you know, check those out. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching.